I'm honored to introduce Tim to Christopher. Known by many as Bitter 70, he earned the title in 2008, making international news for his impulsive, fresh, and successful $1.8 billion bid on 14 parcels. That's totaling 22,500 acres. And he had no intention of paying for the land. He acted in protest of a Bureau of Lands Management, oil and gas, public land lease auction in Utah's Red Rock District. Tim spent 22 months in prison for that heartfelt action. He's a true leader in the contemporary nonviolent direct action movement and aptly the co-founder of Peaceful Uprising. He continues to lead by example, as he did at the doors of FERC with our friend Megan Holleran. That was in March of 2016. And again, he did the same in West Roxbury Pipeline when he laid down in a trench in Boston, Massachusetts with a fellow activist, Karina Gore. That's just a few months later. For Tim, tackling the climate crisis means being, a willing, being willing to confront corporate capitalism and the system that's driving that crisis. His actions are related to the hardship and suffering we see all around us. And they teach that civil disobedience plays a critical role in our struggle for social and climate justice. Please raise your hand and your voices for Tim to Christopher. Thank you. Thank you all for being here today. I want to start first off by thanking you all for the work that you've already done. Thanking the anti-fracking movement of New York for banning fracking across this whole state and saying that won't happen here. I know that took a lot of work, so thank you for that work that you've already done and thank you for not stopping just because you got that ban. Thank you for continuing the struggle and for realizing that you are connected to what's going on all over the rest of the country. For realizing that it's not just enough to not destroy your own backyards. But it's, it, you have to also stand in solidarity with all the other places that would be destroyed if you were to burn crack gas in this state. Because everywhere that the fracking, the fracking industry has gone, all over this country, they have left destruction. From the poisoned water of Pennsylvania to the toxic sand frack mines in, West, in Wisconsin and Minnesota to the earthquakes caused by the injection wells in Oklahoma and Ohio and to the rising seas in places like Rhode Island where I live. This is all connected and it's all caught destruction of communities caused by the fracking industry. But here's the thing, here's the thing, everywhere that the fracking industry has gone and left that destruction, every community that they've destroyed and threatened, every community has risen up and fought back. Everywhere the fracking industry goes, people are coming together and forming a movement and saying, you do not have the right to destroy our communities. You do not have the right to threaten our futures. We will stand up and we will fight back. And we see those people fighting back, getting organized, lifting their voices, making themselves powerful all across this country. And here's the thing, if Governor Cuomo wants to have some ambitions for being a national level politician, he needs to realize that we already have a national movement. We have a national movement that is growing. We have a national movement that is committed. And we have a national movement that does not forget when you threaten our communities. And if he allows, if he allows this power plant to go through, if he does not shut down that plant, this movement will shut down his career. Yeah. 
this, this is a movement that is not going to be discouraged by the money and the power on the other side in the hands of those corporations. This is a movement that is not going to back down and that is not going to take no for an answer. This is a movement that even when we run into the obvious corruption of this corporation and the everyday corruption of corporations that buy our politicians not with boxes of ziti but with campaign contributions, with super PACs, that buy our politicians every day. We're not going to stop just because there's a corrupt system. If we have to, we will change that system and we will build a new one in its place if that's what it takes to defend the rights of our community. I just got back, I just got back this week from the democracy convention in Minneapolis where people from all over the country gathered to figure out how to do that very thing, to defend our rights as a communities to stand up to corporate power and to fundamentally change that system. I was in a workshop there where folks were learning from the examples of the movements that have come before us, the people who were locked out of structures of power and found a way to make their voices heard anyway and to defend their rights. We were studying the abolitionist movement, we were studying the women's suffrage movement, we were studying the populace, and we were studying the equal rights amendment movement. When we were talking about the equal rights amendment, there was an older woman in our group who said, you know, I remember that movement. I remember in the 60s and 70s when people were organizing and people were getting together for this. She said, you know, I wasn't involved. But she said, it wasn't because I didn't care. She said, you know why I wasn't involved? She said, I really thought that those wonderful people from Miss Magazine had it covered. She thought that the, the big name activists of the day, the Gloria Steinems and people like that, that they had it covered because they had a big name, because they seemed to have a plan, because they had a voice that was much bigger than hers. So she didn't get involved. You know what? There were probably a lot of people like that. And today, we still don't have the Equal Rights Amendment. That still hasn't passed. And when she told that story, I remembered back to when I first met Bill McKibben, who's now my friend and mentor. And I met him about 10 years ago when he came out to Utah. And I went up to him and I said, Bill, you gotta tell us what to do. You gotta tell us when and where to take to the streets. Everybody's waiting for you to tell us what to do. And he said, I'm just a writer. That's your job. And I got to talk to him for long enough that I realized He's just a regular guy. Like, yeah, maybe he knows a lot about this. Maybe he cares a lot. But this is just a regular guy. He's not going to save us. Bill McKibben's not going to save us. It was a terrifying realization that I might be my own best hope to defend my future. So the thing I want to impress upon you today is that even though there are lots of leaders in this movement, there are people whose names you might know. There are people who are on the stage today. I promise you, we don't have it covered. We don't have it figured out. We're trying all the things we know how to do. And we're still losing. We still have not protected a livable future from the fossil fuel industry. We need more. We need more initiative. We need more people getting involved. We need more people putting themselves on the line. We need more people stepping up and realizing that they are their own best hope for their future and for their communities. And there are, and there are ways to get involved. There's Roger over there with the clipboard. Roger, wave your hand, wave your clipboard. He's signing people up, people who are ready to take a stand and get involved and engage in civil disobedience and fight for their future. And please, if you're ready, sign up with him and get involved. But also, if you see any opportunity to stand in the way of this power plant, of the next power plant, of the one that we know is coming after that, to stand in the way of pipelines and all the other fossil fuel infrastructure, take it. Take your friends, your community, the people who care, the people who are committed. Do whatever you have to do to stand up and make your voices heard. Even if, even if it's something that those of us whose names you know haven't thought of yet. Even if it's something that, that we haven't asked you to do. Take that action. Take that action. And take it knowing that there is a movement ready to stand behind you. 
even if that movement doesn't know your name yet. There is a movement ready to support you, a movement ready to hold on to you, to keep you safe, a movement ready to lift up your voice and make your action as powerful as it can possibly be. I work with an organization called the Climate Disobedience Center. And we work with folks around the country who are engaging in civil disobedience. And we work to support them, and try to make their actions powerful, to try to help them out in their trials. And there's lots of other communities all over the country that are ready to stand with people taking bold action, as we saw right here in this community, when Jamie and Pramila and, and Madeline were willing to go to jail, that there was a community ready there to support them and to hold on to them and to make their voices and their sacrifices matter. There is that community here, and you're part of a much bigger community all over the country and all over the world that is ready to stand up for our rights. Not just for this power plant. We know there will be another. Somebody just handed me a flyer of a rally next week to fight another frack gas power plant. We know that the fossil fuel industry is not going to give up their billions and trillions in profits easily. This is a fight that we are going to have to continue for the rest of our lives. And, and we need more people coming into this fight every day. More people realizing that they don't need to wait for leadership, but that this is their fight because this is their future and their communities and it is their right to stand up and defend themselves and those they care about. Are you with me in that movement? Are you in that fight? for the rest of your lives? Are you, are you in that fight to defend livable communities, to defend our rights? Thank you, thank you for being a part of that struggle. Now I'd like to introduce a good friend of mine and my partner for the last year who I've been working with, the brilliant musician, singer, songwriter, and troubadour, Brian K. Hall, who's gonna share with you some powerful, story, some powerful stories and some powerful songs. Songs about people doing just what you're doing right now. Realizing that they have a piece of earth to fight for right here. That they are not gonna run from the battleground, but that they are gonna stay right here and fight for, the, for their communities that are worth fighting for. Please welcome Brian K. Hall. to keep it moving. It's a song about finding an inhabitable space. Head, said, son, just look around. There's a battleground in every American town. Oh! I was 
needing help real bad, so I found a shopping strip. Some kids were out there smoking, talking shop, and looking hip. I asked to bum a cigarette, and all of them refused. He said, we don't tolerate no leeches, man. Ain't you heard the news? And I said, well, then where can I catch a bus? I got to Rome. They said, we've been here since the cows left. They ain't ever coming home. Another voice inside my belly had told me first things must be first. So I scrambled for some sustenance for things could get much worse. I hopped into a cafe, crazy neon sign aglow. Set open 24 hours, but not all in a row. The waitress said, we closing all I got to serve you, hun. It's a bowl of roof tar gumbo and a side of Orwell's tongue. I went outside and vomited between the yellow lines But I was rudely interrupted by this posted self-help sign Said, did you wake this morning in a storm of mystery? If so, come on in, have a talk with a doc of history By the time I found the address, Lord, I was bordering on tears And I sat inside that waiting room for like 15,000 years and the doctor, he showed me diagrams and he said, as you can see, history is a disease that afflicts the memories. He asked me for my birthday and I told him 1984. He said, well, there's your problem. It's in the stars. There ain't no cure. And as the session ended, I was filled with grief and shame. And the doc said, let's get started now. First, tell me what's your name. office just about as fast as I could. Outside bushes were burning but they didn't talk too good. I was dying for some rest. I couldn't take the pace no more. So the next place I stepped into was a stationery store. The manager say take what you like. There ain't nothing to be bought. So I snatched a pen and a diary to record my fleeting thoughts. I think that it was working stringing verbs along with nouns. I was starting to recover. I was starting to calm down. Bit by bit, I was piecing things together. When this cop come charging at me, I didn't know no better. He said, I seen you with that light bulb, and I seen you with that pen, and I'm a booking you for vagrancy. Your minds are wandering. Here, here with me. He took me to the jailhouse where he dragged me by my sleeves. There were murderers and miscreants and arsonists and thieves. I was sitting in the corner, all peaceful and serene. I saw this person and all the dirt beneath their fingernails was clean. And I approached them and I asked, hey, what you in for? What you done? And they said, I'm a political prisoner, but it don't bother me none. They said, I think I found the secret to plugging up all these black holes. Making a little meaning without too much rigmarole. You must become a gardener. It's just better for your health. You got to find some place where you can leave part of yourself. You can't hold on to memories, no matter how you toil. So set them free and let them grow. Plant them in the soil. And, and I said, we got to bust you out and spread your message wide. The end times are coming. There's hysteria outside. He said, no, I'd better stay here. I know it to be true. That in the morning, he'll drag another cat in here, just like you. And you better get it going and see what it's all about. And no need to break a thing. I got the key. Just walk straight out. sticking around this here battleground land and build a little space that's worth giving a damn oh the architect's still threatening but undo all i've done i know i'd find the same thing if i were to run and i know it might sound strange but it helps to think this way there's probably a tomorrow but there ain't no yesterday A day like this, a moment in the sun, it's not all it's cracked up to me.
But it's nice island. I'm glad to be here with you. Timekeepers and he bears a debt to those gone before us and who haven't come yet. Arise, oh, the moment shall pass to redeem the toil of the nameless, their forfeited dreams. Arise, oh, ye prayerful, and unfold your hands and place them flat firm on the soil on the land. Turn your eyes upward, and if you must weep, ration your tears for your Savior's asleep. So shallow risen, history's cave, the deep earthly scars that are your mass graves. Drown out the broadcast of silence and fear. Sing through our voices who follow you here. Dry your eyes, arise, arise. of profit and law there is no second chance when your number gets called the ones who possess all the power you seek here in a language you no longer speak arise all ye soldiers and turn your guns round upon those who laugh as they order you down to stomp out the weak and to trample the small arise and defend the most vulnerable All ye prisoners from your concrete hell Dissolve with one voice the walls of your cells And when the warden cries, how can this be? Reply, we are human and must act accordingly Through suburban streets, take with you the vinyl, the asphalt release, the birds from their cages and the kids from their tombs. Breathe out the plastic air from their rooms. Rise, gentle traveler, the northern star wanes. The landslide is uprooting, map from terrain. The cardinals lay writhing and flightless and caught. The day is arriving for dangerous thought. To young poets from irony's chains, from sarcasm's prison, the transcendent claims arise and recall with what clearness you wrote before you grew faded, before you grew cold. 